On-screen controls can be found at the bottom left corner of the viewer on the edit page. If we were to pull up the drop-down menu, we are going to see a slew of features that probably already look familiar to you because you can find them in the inspector panel. So if we were to pull up the menu again, you're going to see transform, you're going to see crop, you're also going to see dynamic zoom, and we also have a few additional features uh, whose parameters are also going to show up in the inspector panel. And we're going to look at those uh, later on in the video. Now to activate on-screen controls, you can simply click on it. This will make it go from gray to white, indicating that it is now activated. You can also use keyboard shortcut, shift tilde key. This will also allow you to activate on-screen controls. By default, it is set to transform, but you can easily change that in the drop-down menu. This will also activate that particular control uh, as well. Uh, one thing you can also do is to go to the view menu up top, and then in the menu, if we were to go to viewer overlay, over there, we can select any control that we want to be set as default or we want to activate. So for now, let's just change it back to transform and we are now ready to get started. So with transform activated, you can now see all the controls instantly on the screen. Now, if you were to click one of those dots around the video itself, this will basically allow you to change the zoom settings, the X axis, the Y axis, or both at the same time. Now, because uh, changing controls on the screen is basically like changing the parameters themselves, uh, you will see all these changes instantly reflected in the parameter itself uh, as well. You can also just click on this video, drag and left and right. This will change uh, the position setting, the position parameters uh, in the inspector panel. And one thing to note here is that if you want to keep the movement in a perfectly straight line, you can hold down the shift key. So this will prevent you from messing up. This will make sure that it's locked in a, uh, in a straight line. Now, another thing we can do here is to click on that dot that's right above that middle dot. Uh, this will allow you to rotate this video 360 degrees. And because we're talking about rotation, anchor point is going to make a huge difference. So if we click on the middle dot, this will allow you to change the anchor point. Basically, this will allow you to change where the rotation is going to be centered. So this, as you can see, is going to change how the rotation is going to look. All right, guys, now to reset all this, let's just come to the inspector panel and click the reset button. All right, so now let's go back to the drop down menu and select crop. And you will notice, first of all, the middle points are gone and we're left with just the points around the video. Now this uh, allow you to uh, crop the video uh, from left and right uh, or you know from the top or bottom. Now, one thing to note here about cropping is that when you drag the video and move it left and right, this is not moving the video itself. This is just moving the cropped section. Uh, so this works a little bit differently than when you move the video uh, left and right, uh, you know, changing position uh, under the transform controls. So now let's go ahead and reset and choose dynamic zoom. Now with dynamic zoom, uh, one thing to note right away is that green screen represents the initial screen size and the red screen represents the ending uh, screen size. So uh, with the red, we're going to change it to a much smaller uh, screen. And then with the green, we're going to leave it at the default screen size. Actually with the red, let's make it a little bit more drastic. So let's move it towards the bottom right there. So if we were to play this, you will see that now it's really zooming in towards the bottom right as the video goes on. And under the inspector control, you can also change the dynamic zoom ease or swap. So if you swap, this will allow you to change the uh, red and green. So if we were to play this right now, you will see that it will zoom out instead of zooming in. So giving you the opposite of what we just created. All right, before moving on, let's make sure we turn off dynamic zoom, because if we don't, then it will always be active in the background, interfering with other controls. All right, let's go to the drop down and then select open effect overlay. Uh, this can be useful for effects that you find under the open effect menu. So uh, if we were to, let's say, uh, drop a zoom blur effect on top of or on top of our video here, uh, you will see, first of all, all the uh, you know parameters show up under effects in the inspector panel. But on the screen, you can change the center of the zoom uh, blur very easily. And if you don't have that turned on, you will have to manually change the position uh, setting, uh, you know, in the inspector panel, which is 
also not very accurate, very precise either. Now, another effect that can be quite useful here is a 3D keyer. So let's find that and then drop it uh, you know, on top of our video there. Uh, so right off the bat, you can start to draw on the screen, uh, you know, on the part where you want to key. And this will also instantly change the video to grayscale to show the alpha channel. So once this is done, you can just uh, move this onto the second track and then uh, bring another video uh, to the first track. And you have a very quick uh, composition like this by using a few strokes on the screen. Uh, and it's very easy to use. Uh, now let's uh, come back to the drop down menu and select fusion overlay, uh, which can be very useful for any effects that use fusion composition. So if we were to go to titles and then under titles, if we were to choose a fusion title, uh, let's say a call out, uh, what we can do is to just drop that, you know, on top of our first video here. Uh, now on the screen, uh, you are going to see that, uh, you know, we have the text itself as well as the animated line and point. So what we can do is to simply change the position uh, of the text uh, as well as the uh, line and point itself uh, by just using the on uh, screen controls. And again, if we don't have this uh, turned on, now, one thing you're going to uh, notice is that we just won't have the ability to change the position. So you will have to change all that uh, through the inspector, uh, through the settings in the inspector panel. All right, guys, lastly, let's come back to the drop down menu and select annotations. So this is great for, you know, making annotations on the screen to draw attention to a certain part of the video that needs to be fixed, needs to, that needs to be edited. Uh, and you can easily do so, easily draw uh, on the viewer. And whenever you do this, this will automatically create a marker in the timeline, in that frame. And you can come to another part of the video, uh, do the same thing. It will also create a marker, but you also have the ability to choose how you want to draw on the screen. Uh, you can use arrow, you can uh, use just a uh, you know single line. Uh, so you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to annotate, how you want to draw attention to this part of the video. You can also change color very easily as well. And because this is a marker, this is going to create a marker. So you can change the name of the marker to something uh, that makes more sense to yourself or to other people. And you can also change this marker to duration marker by holding down the option key uh, very easily. Uh, so yeah, guys, this is basically it uh, for this video. I hope it helps. And uh, as always, I will see you next time.